For more on this, I'm joined by Beck Shrimpton, the Director of Defence Strategy and National Security at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Beck, thank you for your time. Firstly, why is the government considering this? Hi, good afternoon. Nice to be with you. Um, look, it's really important that the government does consider some new creative, flexible and bold initiatives to address the challenges that it is facing with recruitment and retention of ADF personnel. So can you expand on those problems that the government is facing with enlistment and recruitment? So the government, like many other sectors of the, the economy, is uh, is having trouble attracting talent. Uh, this is a, a really difficult time for the ADF where it has a, a really challenging strategic environment that it has to face. It has uh, non-traditional tasks. So while the, uh, the average re requirements that you would think of and, and associate with the Australian Defence Force and the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, we now have five domains um, and an integrated force. So we need people with cyber skills. We need space operators. We need, uh, you know, a whole range of different and new contemporary skills, as well as those tr traditional core Army, Navy and Air Force skills that we always have. Now, um, of course, we're in a really highly competitive market for talent. Um, that's a global um, phenomenon. That is not something that is unique either to defence or to Australia. And so, um, you know, it's a real challenge. Defence has not been able to meet its recruitment targets and it's been having difficulty retaining people. And when you put that against the requirement that the Defence Strategic Review sets for up to 18,500 more ADF members by 2040, so it has the force that it needs to do the job that it requires, there's a, there's a real problem here. So thinking about foreign um, recruitment and how foreign... Uh, members may bolster the, the numbers and the capabilities and the skills of the ADF is definitely something that we need to be doing. So when the government says it's considering allowing friendly countries to be able to enlist with the ADF as a citizenship pathway, what is a friendly country? Oh, traditionally, we have um, had sort of small numbers of, of members um, do what we call a lateral move from from countries like the United States, the UK, New Zealand, Canada, what we call the Five Eyes community. Uh, that works really well because they know us well, we know them well, we have very similar operating procedures and, and ways of, of going about our military tasks. We've also had, though, uh, really small numbers of individuals join our forces from other Commonwealth countries. Um, really key is that uh, what, what the government means when it says friendly countries, countries that share our interests and share our values so that uh, it's really important that when we bring people into the ADF from foreign militaries, we are confident and comfortable that they will integrate well, that they will understand the roles and the tasks of the ADF and that it will in fact be in our national interests for them to join, that it will be, be of a benefit for the ADF, not just necessarily in numbers, but in a capability sense as well. And if this was to get up, would there be a vetting process? And are there other countries with similar pathways like this? Yeah, there are quite a few countries that do um, recruit from foreign militaries or from foreign countries. Um, probably the, the one that springs to mind most easily for us is the United Kingdom, uh, which does have a lot of um, arrangements for recruiting from Commonwealth countries. Um, so, look, there are lots of lessons in that for us and there are lessons from what we've done uh, before as well. But I think we do need to think really, really carefully about our unique circumstances. What is it that the ADF requires from this? What are the key skill sets that we're lacking um, and that we're struggling to recruit into? Um, and we also need to make sure that as we implement a policy of recruiting from foreign militaries, we're not... Um, robbing Peter to pay Paul, so to speak. We don't want to be poaching the same skill sets that our allies and partners are looking for. We want, we want to sort of, we all have always had a collective security approach. So we want to increase our own security and also increase that of our allies and partners. And as the government has pointed to the Pacific as a potentially new source of recruitment for the ADF, we need to think really hard and work very closely with the Pacific to make sure that we're not taking crucial talent away from those countries that's, a, that's essential for the running of their, their governments, their culture and their society. And that as we train and skill those people that we're taking a long-term view as to how those pa partner nations can benefit just as much from this as the ADF itself will. So it's, uh, it's complicated, it's nuanced, 
um, and really, if done well, it could be it could be really important for the ADF, and it could help us beyond numbers. It could help us really round out our capability and be a very well prepared force for some of the challenges that we're needing to face. Alongside this consideration, I understand Australia has also offered uh, continuation bonuses for ADF staff. Are there any other options you think the government should consider to address this uh, issue regarding enlisting and retaining ADF personnel? Yeah, the continuation bonuses, I think, are they're a good idea. They're what I would call um, necessary but not sufficient. Um, they, they sit alongside a number of initiatives that Defence has put in place over the last few years, including the ADF gap year, the cyber gap year. They're looking really closely at reserves and how to modernise reserves. Um, I think what's really important to appreciate is that the, the sense um, and the obligation or the, the desire uh, within many Australians to serve uh, is there, is strong across the public service, across industry, um, what defence needs to do is is think about how it can tap into that that desire, even in people who don't necessarily want to put on a uniform full time, and take on everything that it means to be an ADF member full time. Um, so flexibility will be key. Uh, really thinking about new pathways and accessing exactly those pools of talent that we need, not necessarily on a permanent basis, but but to give defence what it needs, um, it's it's going to take some some really interesting and and some bold thinking. Beck Shrimpton, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you for your time. Thank you.